and we are back with another video. Thank you for all the views on my last video. That was incredible. I mean, it's 5,000 views in less than 12 hours. So clearly I hit a nerve and you guys are commenting like crazy and liking it. So I'm glad I can help. Today, we're going to a car meet. It is Sunday. It was raining all night last night, but it's supposed to be clear today and then rain again tomorrow. So we're, we have a short window to go to a car meet. This will be the first time going to a car meet with my daughter. So that's cool. We're gonna take her new 2022 Supra wild wrapped pink machine and the Lamborghini is gonna come out and my buddy is supposed to come down and bring my scat pack so that we can have a Mopar on the drive with us. And we're gonna go to a cool car meet. Just hang out with a bunch of car people. And I'm gonna stop for a minute while I'm there, share with you what I believe is a risky game these dealers are playing and why I think really if we think about this, there will be an opportunity and there will be maybe a short run on the bank, if you will, run on the manufacturer to get these cars to the dealerships, which will benefit us. It's a little bit of an interesting way of looking at this, but I think it's just common sense. And a few of you have commented to this effect as well, so I'm gonna share that with you in a second. But now let's start up the Lamborghini, which hasn't started in nearly a month, which is horribly sad, but we've been traveling, we've been in Mexico, we've been all over the place, so I have not had to start the car. It's been on a tender, so hopefully it does start and it should be loud, and it should be smoky, and it should be ridiculous. So let's start this baby up. Like a champ, started up, first try, smoking everywhere, loud, obnoxious, she's old, but she's healthy. And she's young, and also healthy, thank goodness. What are you doing? Are Matching it. Does your shirt match the car? Does your, your car match your shirt? Or your shoes, shoes match the, the, car, the car matches the shoes. There you go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired. It's early. All right. Go watch her channel at Car Girl Kendall. She's got her second video up. Tons of views. Subscribers are coming in. You guys are being incredibly supportive. So please go follow her channel. It's a lot of fun stuff. And it's where I get to use some editing skills to be extremely immature. Look at all that smoke. Woo! The V10s burn oil. It's not anything wrong with the car. So before you come just how it is. Um, also, do we have the extra batteries? I do, they're in my front seat. I'll give them to you. Did you not charge last night? No, but it should be perfect. Roll. No, because this one, because it was fine. It was at like 90 last time. Rule number one, always oh have God, so cool. a charged battery and? Yeah, 98. Extra batteries. 98, you're good. Then I got two others in there too. Yes, sir. And no, watch, what's the rule? No filming while you're driving. Yeah, no. And I'm gonna give you a radio. Wait. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm like a part of the group. <laughs> You're part of the group. I'm so excited. So, all right, let's go. It's great. For a little four cylinder, this thing sounds nasty. And yeah, we'll make it sound crazier later, but we're taking our time because I don't want her to be pulled over all the time because she already got pulled over once for an Oprah license plate. So check out that video. She's going to put up today or tomorrow telling a story about her first time getting pulled over where you were terrified, but you, did, but you did not cry. I didn't cry. You're tough. You're sturdy. Yep. Like yep. my dad. Safety check. Making sure she can see out of the mirrors. This is a good kid right here, everybody. Making sure she can see out of the mirrors. Making sure you can see out of the... The rear view camera. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, folks, we are on the way to the meet and just a little heads up, she doesn't watch my videos as <laughs> I'm old and not that cool. Um, but this is what life's about, folks. When you can find a passion that you and your child loves, and then do that together, like this car thing we're doing right now, with my little girls behind me. I'm just telling you, it gets me choked up. I love this. I love this kid. I love that she loves cars. I wish she loved Mopar more, but it doesn't matter. We're hanging out, folks. This is what life's about. Forget about everything else. This is it. All right, let's go see if their space is open. Whoops. And this thing is still a little cold. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Don't hit the poles. Oh, gosh. She didn't hit the poles. 
those holes right there. They get caught so you can tell by the way they went. Look at my kid flying. Unbelievable. No restriction. Right here. Yeah? Oh, you want me to back? Want me to park it? I'll do it. So she's got she's to master this. She's got to stick the landing. She's got to do the triple axle into the parking space without hitting the wall, Mercedes, or the Lamborghini. It's okay if she hits Chris. Oh, she's doing good. She's only been driving three weeks, people. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing perfect. Look at you. Outstanding. I want a, I want a uh, standing ovation from everybody when she does it. You're doing great. Look at you. There they are, the late group. Hey, where's the sky? Where are you? They're, they didn't go get it. <laughs> Hear that sound? Hear that slapping sound? There's Hope, guys. She's hanging out with the Mopar people. This, there's some chance. We could trade the Super in, get her a scat pack, challenger, wide body. That'd be awesome. Look at this thing. Woo! This thing's nice, man. I got a scat pack at home. Oh, but I don't. Mine doesn't do that. What the hell is that? <laughs> that's me being bored with the workshop. Oh my god, dude, that's insane. There's a screen underneath there or something. And look who's bringing her defender. Hey. Yeah. Hi. I suck at parking. Say it. That's pretty freaking good. For me. Look at that. Now back it in. Now back it in. <laughs> and that dude fell down and I missed it on video. Dude went down on the bicycle. Hey, do that again. I didn't get it on video. A few minutes later. Hey, how much more do those things run? More than you can afford. <laughs> What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. Smoke. Either put a swimsuit on or get the f out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> A scat pack. You know My you do. I love the power. I hate that they get loose. Oh yeah. That's because you're kind of a sissy. The rest of us love that part of that car. Look at that. Look at you. Look at you. I want to push it on the curve. I know, right? I just go straight. Yeah, that's a straight. It's a I don't muscle. I want to go straight or go left. My scat pack, everybody. That awesome. Somebody's gonna call me out for this. Check out this watch, everybody. Tell me that's not awesome. That is a Casio calculator watch. This is the 80s special. I found it for like 70 bucks and I had to have it. Through the Rolex in the drawer, through the Hermes Apple Watch in the drawer. Bring out this baby. Let me rock it for my video today. It tells perfect time and I can do long version math with my fingernails. Screw the iPhone. How cool is that thing? Everybody check out Kendall's merch. Look at that. Woo! It's on ocmotivator.com if you want to go support her. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, it'll be on her own site soon, but right now, we're housing everything there. Yeah, now, I just am excited to see you. I'm excited to see your daughter's car. Yeah! <laughs> Everybody is! <laughs> Alright, we're at the next meet. 
Kendall did great on the highway. Now we're going to find somewhere to talk about how Dodge is playing a very risky, risky game that I think may benefit all of us. No pressure, Tom. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Beautiful no pressure. <laughs> no. Get the taser out. <laughs> <laughs> Now he saw all the cameras, he's like, he saw all the cameras, he's like, he saw 37 cameras come out here. Don't hug him, don't hug him. You owe us all some dinner. It's all these cameras, they're all sitting here. It's on the lady in the hat. Dude, that was the you best way to put this. Your heart's pumping. He's like, here, let me, let me, let me. just slow down. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Man. I don't need this stuff. That was the ending for the show. Oh, jeez. Your show's over. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. That's so money. Every <laughs> time. I'm like, yeah, it's somebody, I just, I'm gonna go mess with somebody else today. I don't need to be on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> that was great. All the cameras, he said, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Slow it down. <laughs> oh my God, that was amazing. That was so freaking funny. God, there was a whole crowd of whole crowd. Everybody. They all had a camera. Like, you know, when that popcorn's like, like, and all the kids are running to it, that's exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, let me step away from everybody real quick and share with you why I believe these Mopars, the prices will come down, they will stabilize, and we will get these things for MSRP. And here's why. And so many of you have put this in the comments that there's a belief, there's a strong belief that Dodge will have a problem delivering all of the allocations and here's why remember they're gonna be shutting Brampton down at the end of the year and that means that if all the cars aren't accounted for meaning been built that the cars that are the latest in the process being ordered possibly could never get delivered or get delivered very very late so here's what's happening with the dealerships they've got these allocations and they're holding out as the guy shared yesterday on my last video that they're gonna wait until somebody's willing to pay the $50,000 markup or the $10,000 markup. So with thousands and thousands of allocations sitting there waiting, as he said, until the buyer, the dumb buyer, comes in and pays their stupid, ridiculous, high asking price, they're gonna sit and wait. The problem with that is, is they're not putting the orders in. So they're delaying the process of getting the cars delivered. So what we know about Dodge is if you wait too late in the year, your allocation gets moved to the next year. This time they won't have that ability, meaning they're gonna to have to push production out to 2024 to finish some of these orders. Think about this, if there's, let's say, 5,000 orders that have not been placed in, let's say, October, how are they gonna produce those cars when the dealers have been sitting on all these allocations? I'm gonna predict that a lot of those allocations, if not used early enough in the year, are going to go away because they're not reserved, meaning there's no penalty and Dodge not delivering them. Now, will that raise the price of the existing ones? I don't know, I still don't think so because there's plenty of these other cars out there. But if I owned a dealership today, what I would do is I would take my allocation and order every car I possibly can with my allocations in specs that I know are popular and get those cars on the dealership floor and be the first ones to sell. Why? Because people will pay more money for cars that to be the first one having it. They will pay more to say I'm the first one, but the ones at the end, they're gonna be the holdouts like me that say I'm not gonna pay that price. I'd rather you sit on that car until, until you know, halfway into 2022 to be able to sell it. So when will the dealers decide, I need to just suck up my allocations? Right now, allocations are getting sucked up now, orders put in, those cars are going to production. They're gonna get built. But the longer they wait, the higher risk that they have of that car even getting delivered at all or being delayed tremendously. We know that from the past, meaning that by the time these cars show up to lots and people are backing out, 
and they're sitting with standing inventory, they're stuck, they're screwed. Now they have all these allocations and they have standing inventory and they can't get those allocations done, that's a problem. They may lose them completely and these dealers will lose money. They will lose those sales by being greedy. And I'm telling you, if that happens, I'm gonna be the first one on the you know sidelines dying laughing. The other issue is when you guys are giving these big deposits to these dealerships, just know they're sitting on those deposits and spending that money. They're not putting in a safe trust account. They're taking that money and they're using that money for the next six to eight months. And what I also think is gonna happen is when people start backing out or can't perform on their allocation, their, when their car shows up, they're gonna want their deposits back. And these dealers that are taking five, $10,000 deposits, refundable are gonna have to start cutting those checks back. Also, dealers that are doing non-refundable deposits are gonna start getting sued because they're not really supposed to do that. That's not cool. You just to reserve a car that there's you know 10,000 allocations sitting out there that they can go buy. So for that reason, folks, I think these dealers are playing a risky game. And again, they should just execute all their orders, get those cars on the lot now, and get them sold. And maybe they could get markups, but if they wait too long, they won't be able to. And we're gonna benefit from it because there's gonna be dealers desperate to get those orders in. And if they're just thinking they can sit there, like the guy said, for six months till they get their money, it's not gonna happen. They're gonna lose the allocation. And the dealers are gonna realize this at some point and start pushing to get those, those deals orders, those orders in so they can actually get a sale versus playing the game for the markup. Because at some point, Dodge is going to say, if you didn't use your allocations this year, then you've got to you know, give up that allocation and we're just not going to build the car. So he can't wait six months. He can't wait a year. They're going to have to put in those orders at some point and get those cars delivered, which means standing inventory will find its way to the dealerships as soon as these clowns catch on to what the game that they're playing. And now they're all sitting there, let's say 20 of them sitting on a dealership, or like the dealer I called yesterday was 16 of them. Let's say 10 of them are sitting there not getting sold. They're asking $50,000 markups. You don't think they're gonna come down on those prices? You don't think they're gonna put those orders in to get those cars delivered to the dealership? But then they gotta have the money. But if they're paying back $100,000 in deposits, $200,000 in deposits, and have to order these cars, pay for these cars, and sell these cars, now they're, now they're using money, their own money, to buy and hold these cars. That costs some money. Flooring fees, everything else they have, to have those cars sitting there not selling. There's gonna be a reckoning if these dealers keep playing this game. What they should be doing now is get those, get those orders in and get those cars delivered to customers so they can get their money, salesmen can get their commission, and they can ride this year out and let other dealers play Russian roulette with Stellantis. As Stellantis says, well, you didn't get the order in time, we're gonna pull the allocation. Since there's no order appended to it, you don't have it anymore. And they lost that money. That's what I think could happen. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would be curious if anybody has any other intel with that because it just seems like common sense that it makes sense. These dealers are playing a dangerous game with the thousands and thousands of allocations that are, that are sitting there not being used up. All right, now let's go. We're gonna grab something to eat, end this video, call it a day. All right, so we're headed to lunch and I just wanted to share just a couple more simple thoughts real quick is uh, I got a few comments like this one I'll put up that the dealership is sitting on a bunch of 2022s that they cannot get rid of. They're just sitting there. I've been offered multiple 2022s at sticker at MSRP. So here's the deal. If 2022s are still lingering around, what do you think is going to happen when these 2023s come out? The 2022 prices will drop, especially when the inventory of 2023 start to back up. So we've got two options here that'll happen. And it's really important that we we use our common sense and outsmart these dealers is dealers will sit waiting to get orders so they don't have to carry the cost of these things and collect deposits, float that money out there while we wait for these cars to show up. They wait for new buyers to show up and take up their other allocations that have yet to be taken up. Thousands of them, by the way, almost three months in that have not been absorbed yet. So what happens if they hold out too long and now they lose those allocations, they can't get delivered or they're too late? Because remember, at the end of this year, it's not like they're just gonna kick them to 2024s. 2024s aren't getting made, which means, or you get stuck with some other new car. Also keep in mind that some point this year, Dodge is going to announce the new, the, the new charger options, powertrain options. And I'm gonna bet, I'm gonna bet, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna bet they're gonna come out with an ICE option. They're gonna come back, come out with an engine option, a gas engine option. Maybe it's a, a twin turbo six cylinder hurricane, whatever that is. 
it's going to come out and there's going to be something that people are going to be interested in. If that happens, then the 2023s, who's going to want those if they can get... miles of 91. All right. Excuse me. If they could get the 2024 and get a nice engine and get something that will probably be pretty amazing to have. Now, we'll see. I want a V8. A lot of us want the V8s. So those of us that are nostalgic and want those will definitely buy them still, but we're not going to pay 50000 over. So with that, everybody, use your brain, use your common sense, be smarter than these dealers, play the game. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, so be it. You either believe in me or you believe in these dealers, what they tell you. But when they tell you that these cars are going to double in value and they're all going to be gone, and you look on DodgeGarage.com, Horsepower Locator, and there's thousands of them, still not sucked up, still not reserved, and you know that now we're in 2023, and the cars that get, the orders that get in earliest will be delivered the soonest, and the ones that are too late will never probably get delivered. That, because the, the, the plant's going to be shutting down. That the dealer will be out of that sale. So dealers at some point are going to have to put their allocation orders in and just get standing inventory and hope that they can mark those up when they arrive. Or they're going to have to start selling those allocations earlier in the year, meaning second quarter at the very latest to make sure that those cars get delivered this year or even built. So with that, everybody, please like, subscribe, comment, stay motivated, be respectful in the comments. Feel free to tell me if I'm not some crazy, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just do it in a respectful way and I won't fire back at you. So don't be a troll. Anyways, take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.